What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package update, and stimulus check update. And we have one, a major bill passed in the Senate last night, and two, the Supreme Court strikes down a major bill both pretty much on the same topic, and this is on the minds of, well, most Americans here as uh, uh, it's really just a major topic here going forward, and we have a lot of people on both sides of the fence here. Uh, I'll show you the details here, and you're going to be shocked. Uh, well, you might be shocked on some of the details here on both of these uh, rulings here. One of what passed here in the Senate and the Supreme Court ruling, and then also what the governor of New York, uh, her response, I'll actually let you hear her directly. And a lot of people are really just kind of completely shocked here. Um, you can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. Let's jump right in. Also, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, make sure to click the subscribe button down below so if you uh, don't miss out on any new videos here. And don't forget to hit the like button for us as well. Okay, first up, you can see here the Senate passes a gun major gun safety bill that, that they've been working on here for a while, breaking years-long stalemate after we've had really a lot of massive news here from the Uvalde school shooting, the Buffalo one. And we have mass shootings here, over 250 of them just since uh, the first half of this year, just up until June 1st even. Uh, here's the vote that happened in the Senate late last night. The yeas are 65, the nays are 33. The motion to concur with an amendment is agreed to. Yeah, so you can see here the Senate voted 65 to 33 on a bipartisan bill that included Republicans Thursday evening to pass a bill to strengthen background checks. You can let me know here if you think this bill has enough to deal with the gun crisis and the school shootings and the mass shootings, the amount of them uh, that we have here in the United States. We have more mass shootings in the United States. Uh, then we have days in the year. Uh, and remember, a mass shooting is considered uh, four people shot or killed in the shooting, not even including the shooter. So this just doesn't, this doesn't encounter just a single person or two people getting shot or even three people. Uh, that only includes four people getting shot or more. Uh, we have more of those happen in the United States than we have days in the year, let alone the the shootings that happen with just like one person or two people getting shot. So <laughs> we have a lot of people uh, getting shot here in the U.S. But let me know if you think this bill goes far enough. Check this out. So this bill will strengthen background checks for gun buyers only younger than 21. So only for ages 18 to 21, it will strengthen background checks for them. It will provide billions of dollars in money for mental health treatment, and help states administer red flag laws, which will basically be up to the states to administer, which I have a suspected feeling that some states, uh, some very Republican states, might not even set up at all. We will have to see here. Um, they're basically leaving it up to the states, which <laughs> uh, will be very ironic, or you may even call hypocritical here, as we'll see here later on with this Supreme Court ruling. Um, uh, you, you'll see why here in, in a few minutes, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't make this stuff up, but you, you'll see why. So the um, red flag laws are not like, you know, mandatory. And to take away a gun from a dangerous person um, We'll have to see how the states rule and stuff, but it would have to be a court decision, most likely, um, to then prove that somebody is dangerous 
and then to take away a gun from somebody. You, you'll hear the New York uh, governor here talk uh, in a few minutes as well. You can see here, this will then set up a vote in the House as soon as Friday. It will almost surely pass in the House because Democrats can pass it alone in the House. Um, and, and, and there'll probably be a few Republican votes in the House as well. The strong bipartisan vote for the bill is expected to give it enough momentum to sail through the House and make it to President Biden's desk, giving him one of the biggest domestic policy achievements of his first two years in office. Senators hailed passage of the legislation, which cracks down on straw purchasers and illegal gun traffickers and closes the boyfriend loophole to deny guns to romantic partners convicted of misdemeanors, domestic violence offenses, and, and as a bipartisan breakthrough. Lawmakers of both sides of the aisle praised it as the most significant anti-violence legislation to pass the Senate in nearly 30 years. Well, really, one of the only. You can see here, even The Hill says, who's nonpartisan, says Congress has done very little to crack down on gun violence since it passed the Brady Handgun Violence Prevention Act in 1993 and Crime Bill in 1994, which was about 30 years ago. The legislation also provides money for school resource officers and fortifying school buildings from the attack. It's a moment of victory and redemption for Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut and other Democrats who tried and failed to pass legislation to curb violence after a 20-year-old gunman killed 20 children and six educators at Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2012. They weren't able to pass anything after that school shoot. This time around, Democrats led by Murphy again scaled back their demands for bold gun control reforms, such as universal background checks, bans on assault rifles, style rifles, and high-capacity magazines. So again, this time around, there are no universal background checks for anybody 21 or over. The, Background checks are only for people under the age of 21, 18 to 21. Uh, there's no bans whatsoever at all on um, assault rifle style weapons. And there's also no ban whatsoever on high capacity magazines. Um, a lot of people were calling upon um, saying, what, what is the need for high capacity magazines uh, out in the public? You know, we're not talking about military, I, um, you know, that, that have, you know, rounds of 100, uh, you know, rounds, uh, which we've seen in a lot of these shootings. Uh, let me know, in fact, if you're in the military. Um, you know, I, I've had some family in the military. My brother was served in the military. Uh, my grandfather served in the Navy. In fact, he was in Pearl Harbor. He was at Pearl Harbor two days before the attack at Pearl Harbor. Uh, so he left Pearl Harbor, he was stationed there. He left there two days before the attack actual hit. Yeah, I know. Things could have been very different if he was there when the actual attack hit, because if he would have went down, my mother would might not have been born, and then I wouldn't be here. So yeah, I have I have multiple family members uh, in you know different uh, branches of the military, but I've had a lot of comments from military members that say. Um, and you can let me know your thoughts on this, that assault style rifles, you know, fully automatics, um, should not be in the hands of, uh, you know, regular civilians that they, you know, they weren't intended for that. And in fact, um, some of the creators of assault, uh, rifles, you know, fully automatics basically is what we're talking about here. Um, they've actually said, I'll show you a headline here. In fact, this story is actually from 2016. So this was actually before we had um, the huh, really bad, you know, school incidences. Family of AR-15 inventor Eugene Stoner says he didn't intend it for civilians. He intended it for the military, for trained professionals, um, and for it to be used, you know, on the battlefield. The inventor's surviving children and adult grandchildren uh, spoke exclusively to MSNBC commenting for the first time on their family's uneasy legacy and said, 
that it wasn't intended for civilians at all. At all. But yeah, let me know if you're in the military or if you were in the military, what, what your thoughts are on this in the comments. So yeah, they worked with Republicans. This strategy works. It's a good strategy. Work together. Democrats, Republicans, don't just try to cram something down the other party's throats. 15 Republicans voted yes, including Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell voted for the legislation, which Republicans say won't infringe on Second Amendment rights of law-abiding gun owners. Gun owners. If you abide by the law, this will have no problem with any law-abiding gun owners. Um, Mitch McConnell said, quote, the American people want their constitutional rights protected and their kids to be safe in school. They want both of those things at once. And this is just what the bill before the Senate will have accomplished. Quote, this is the sweet spot, making Americans safer, especially for kids in school, without making our country one bit less free. Chuck Schumer says it's a long overdue step in the right direction. It's significant. It's going to save lives. And it's been a long time. At least it's one step in the right direction. The final vote caps weeks of long, intense negotiations with Republicans and Democrats, a turning point for the Senate. However, some Republicans slammed it, like Republican Senator Ted Cruz from Texas, who is a huge, um, uh, how do I say this, receives huge amounts of funding from the NRA, the National Rifle Association, took to the floor Thursday to voice his opposition. Cruz slammed it for funding red flag laws, which allows courts to seize firearms. Notice it says courts seize firearms from people deemed to be threats to themselves or others. He says, quote, these so-called red flag laws have been implemented in multiple states, and they enable the state to take away the right to keep and bear arms from law-abiding citizens. They render you vulnerable, during which he raised his voice and banged his lectern. Cruz said provisions in the bill satisfy the Democratic pri political priority to go after the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms of law-abiding citizens, repeatedly calling it a Democrat bill, even though it was negotiated by Democrats and Republican colleagues. However, even Mitch McConnell pointed to polling that shows a majority of gun owners supported, supported the provisions of the bill. Mitch McConnell noted that 79% of gun owners support federal funding for states to implement red flag laws. 86% support prohibiting someone from purchasing or owning firearms who has been convicted of domestic violence against a boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, or significant other. And 87% support making criminal and mental health records of juveniles available to the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. And let's be honest here. If a core to rules that somebody's dangerous, they're a threat, they have a criminal record, I mean, we have to have some type of way to say, they shouldn't own a gun, right? I mean, if we have no way at all to say this, the only other alternative would be they literally go to a scene with a gun and a police officer has to take them down. And oftentimes that doesn't happen until they're actually shooting. So, I mean, you let me know your thoughts, but if we don't have any way to stop somebody who's deemed you know, dangerous or, you know, by a court system, what's the alternative? We have to have some type of way, right? If we don't have that, then there's literally no other way to stop somebody before a shooting occurs. You let me know your thoughts in the comments. So meanwhile, this is one step in the right direction. You've seen the polling numbers. Those were literally by Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader, pointed those out. Um, we also had a major gun law struck down yesterday by the Supreme Court. Yeah, so New York State had passed a gun law in their state just recently here 
I covered it on my channel maybe a week or two ago. Well, the Supreme Court actually just struck it down yesterday and overruled the state. Now, this is going to get very interesting, ironic, and maybe even hypocritical here. And you'll see why here in a second. So first, here's some details on what happened. Check this out. This is a very significant announcement today. Yes, and uh, certainly what we expected, Jose, based on how the case was argued, uh, how, the, how it went when the case was argued last fall. And, of course, one of the things here is uh, what kind of restrictions can states still place on getting a concealed carry permit? Now, you can get a concealed carry permit in every state in the country. The question here was, what about those seven states, including New York, or eight states, including New York, that put ad an additional burden on getting a concealed carry permit, the desire, uh, the need to show some special need for it? What the uh, Justice Kavanaugh and Justice, uh, Chief Justice John Roberts say in their uh, concurrence here is that states don't necessarily have to just say, you know, all you have to do is show up and you get a concealed carry permit. That is the way it is in some states. But the court says here that states can still place some conditions on getting a concealed carry permit. They can require applicants to undergo a fingerprint check, a mental health check, a criminal records check, uh, and, and show that they can uh, are proficient in handling firearms. So, this is not uh, this. The court here is not endorsing simply uh, you ask and you get policy for concealed carry permits. That is the policy in some states. But the court is leaving the door open for states nonetheless to make it a little more difficult to get a concealed carry permit. And well, this is where things get interesting, because the Supreme Court, uh, which has six Republicans on the Supreme Court and three Democrats on the Supreme Court, voted to overturn the state's ruling for their own state six to three yesterday. And well, yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of controversy over this because while this the, the Supreme Court is expected to rule here potentially within the next week or so on Roe versus Wade and probably strike that down again with the Republican majority. It's weird how a lot of these things are political, re Republican versus Democrat. And what's expected to happen there is they're expected to, because that it got leaked, their their memo, their their paper that they wrote, and they're expected to basically say that it will no longer be a federal decision and that the states should govern their own states and rule on each state's right. Well, that's basically the opposite of what the states are saying here, or what the Supreme Court is saying here. <laughs> so in one case, the states should govern themselves, and in the other case, they should not. I can't make this stuff up. Here's what the New York governor has to say. Uh, when she heard that her that their bill that they passed got struck down or overruled by the Supreme Court, which is basically nine people. Check this out. Apparently, the Supreme Court has now decided with this far-reaching decision that the two-step standard that had been in place since Heller versus McDonald, where they analyze the Second Amendment, where it combines history, we have a history, yes, we do, but also means and scrutiny. Does the means of the restriction justify the infringement? And most people would say, yes, we have a right to protect people from gun violence. But I'll simply say in our very quick analysis, because this is only minutes old, they have now said that the government must demonstrate that the regulation is consistent with this, this, this nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. That's it. No longer can we strike the balance. Only if a firearm regulation is consistent with this nation's historical tradition may a court conclude that the individual's conduct falls outside the Second Amendment's unqualified command. 
shocking, absolutely shocking, that they have taken away our right to have reasonable restrictions. We can have restrictions on speech. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. But somehow there's no restrictions allowed on the Second Amendment. This is New York. We don't back down. We fight back. And we'll be alerting the public, the media, in the very short term, of exactly what our language that we've been analyzing. We have language we'd like to now enact into law. We'll be sharing that with the leaders. And I'm sorry this dark day has come. That we're supposed to go back to what was in place since 1788, when the Constitution of the United States of America was ratified. And I would like to point out to the Supreme Court justices that the only weapons at the time were muskets. I'm prepared to go back to muskets. I don't think they envision the high-capacity assault weapon magazines intended for battlefields as being covered from this, but I guess we're just going to have to disagree. So I'll return to our purpose of being here and let people know that our new laws are going to be looking at restrictions on sensitive locations, changing the permitting process, creating a threshold for those. We're going to have training requirements. We're going to make sure that people have concealed weapons as specified training. We have a whole lot of ideas. And also look at a system where businesses and private property owners would have the right to protect themselves. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. We're just getting started here. Wow. So let me know your thoughts here. The New York governor says, we're New York. We don't back down. We're going to fight back. Yeah, so in one case, the, the Senate, a bipartisan group of Republicans and Democrats, um, led by Republican leaders Mitch McConnell and uh, Texas Senator John Cornyn, uh, make a deal and they pass a bill, a major bill, a uh, step in the right direction for uh, gun safety. And uh, in the other direction, the Supreme Court, nine people uh, strike down a bill that was just passed by New York State, their legislature, for gun safety. <laughs> All in the same day. Can't make this stuff up. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I will keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country. Uh, make sure to subscribe down below. Um, New videos come out here every day. Uh, it's completely free to subscribe. I will keep you up to date here. You can click here to see my newest video about World War III possibly breaking out because of Ukraine and what UK, the United Kingdom, just said. It's really major. And click here to see my newest video on stimulus checks. Really big news there as well. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.